Um, I want to do a, a session on uh, using the client manager plugin. Um, it's not all that spectacular, I think. Uh, the idea for, for this session came from uh, an actual use case I had uh, with a customer. Um, so, uh, anyone use the client manager plugin? A lot of people, so probably a lot of what I'm going to tell is not even new to you, or maybe it is. Um, uh, and another question, who is using the user manager plugin? It's only one. Well, <laughs> there, is a, there is a message from uh, the user manager master here, and uh, he contacted me, uh, he contacted me uh, earlier this week saying, uh, yeah, you do a client manager session. Uh, so, please. <laughs> So uh, actually, uh, for the, for people who don't know, Patrick is uh, also uh, um, uh, nowadays uh, one of the uh, Savoy employees and uh, uh, has created a user manager plugin uh, uh, back in uh, back in the days. <laughs> it's been around for quite a while, um, but uh, it, it seems that uh, some of the uh, uh, some of the API stuff is uh, is probably going to break anytime soon. Uh, also, in the newer versions of, of Servoy, uh, you need uh, additional information on the uh, on the plugin package, uh, otherwise it won't run. And um, Patrick is definitely not going to change that. <laughs> but luckily, I see there's a lot of people not using it. Um, so uh, the client manager plugin, what is it? Uh, it is uh, 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 yeah, as as uh, the name is uh, is telling you, it's it's about managing your your clients uh, get, giving you information to uh, giving you the, the tools to do that so it's getting information about the connected clients um, you can you can get database logs that uh, that is uh, quite helpful um, you can send messages to your clients um, shut down your clients and uh, actually broadcast the information uh, that last bit is is where we will be going, and I'll um, will you will show you uh, some uh, some things. Um, so, um, if you want to get the client information, um, you can uh, you you get the uh, JS client info object, uh, and um, you can do that for the current session, and then. You have um, when when you ask for the connected clients on a, on the uh, on the server, you can uh, you can get that object for each each of your clients, so you can just easily look through that. So um, what is in that client information? Um, there is the uh, client ID, which is the uh, UUID as it's, as it's registered on the uh, application server by Servoy. Um, the application type, so. Um, what what is the uh, is it an ng client headless client um, uh, that those those are uh, integers and and uh, and supported by the application types in emulator in uh, in Servoy. Um it will give you the open solution name uh, can give you the open solution name then there's information about the date and time of the login uh, idle, any idle time last access time. That is simply a JavaScript date object that is, is returned. Then uh, uh, information about the host address, which is the external IP of the connected client, host identifier, which is the server name and local IP, um, the host name, which is the uh, the uh, URL that you're connected to, which could uh, in in um, for example, for the uh, server cloud, that will be admin.servercloud.eu. Um, and then there is the username and UUEID. This is the information which you pass when you do security login. So if you, if you register your users by email address, the username will actually be that user uh, email address and um, any UUEID, which could be the internal UUEID of your, um, of your uh, uh, user table or anything else, if that matters to you. Um, and um, very helpful information is what is the connection status. So, um, if you uh, um, if you have seen the uh, Servoy admin page, you you probably see that um, uh, 
if a client is connected, you see that web sockets are connected, but when they close a the browser, it will say web sockets are disconnected. And at some some time, um, Tomcat will even uh, completely kill that session and it's gone. Also from your admin page. Um, and then there's uh, of course the get client infos, which uh, could be very helpful to you. Um, there's some default information about the user agent, the platform you're using, local uh, local is using session keys, and uh, then you can add custom information to that. Uh, that has been around for for a long time. Uh, you could could do that in, in smart client already. Um, you could just add information, uh, whatever you like. If, uh, uh, for example, the um, the tenant ID that that particular user is is uh, uh, part of. Um, well, anything you like. Um, and through the client manager plugin, you can get that client information. Uh, we can retrieve that client information and uh, do some nice things with that. Um, well, I think um, most of this sounds pretty familiar, uh, and it is, because basically all the client manager is covering with this, these functions is what is currently available on the server admin page. So um, it's the, uh, the solution name. You can get the total number of clients for the particular solution if you, uh, if you um, uh, summarize the information you get uh, from the connected clients. Uh, the application server, the client with uh, the username, the host name, the external IP of the user, uh, well, any anything. Um, and then down here, this is the additional information you um, you will you will get with the user agent platform and uh, well, local session key and any any of the information that you add to that. Um, <coughs> So the additional information is actually a uh, an array you get back. So it's it's a um, uh, a position for each uh, each bit of information in here, and you can easily write uh, a function that will change uh, will convert this into um, into an object. So that is um, you you can you can just ask for what is the <coughs> user agent or what's the platform or anything. Uh, any bit of information that you're adding yourself. Um, so, um, looking at, at database logs, um, there there are a couple of functions uh, that you that you uh, can uh, uh, can use. Um, it, database logs can prevent other users from uh, from uh, uh, editing records. Uh, uh, it's nice to see which uh, which um, other user is actually uh, the the, um, uh, the the culprit here, and is, is locking that. Um, basically, if this happens a lot of times, you you're just using uh, database transactions the wrong way. Um, but uh, in, in case you encounter this, you can you can get all the logs through uh, uh, the plugins client manager get logs that will give you a data set with all of the information. Uh, so that's the client ID, which data source uh, it is, the primary key that's affected. Um, and then uh, from that information from, uh, uh, um, you get from the data set, you can use the client manager, get locked by client to get the actual client information object. As soon as you have the client information object, you can uh, get the client ID you can actually message that particular user saying, "Hey, you, you're locking, you're locking something. Um, finish whatever you're doing. Close your close your session uh, in a in a correct way." Um, and then, of course, uh, um, if the user doesn't respond and and you know he's not around or whatever, um, and the the uh, documentation is telling you this, um, but uh, you can you can uh, call the release locks function, but you have to be careful with that. Because if someone's actually in a valid transaction, um, you will just break things. <laughs> so don't forget to read to read the documentation on this, and don't ignore the warning on that. Um, so um, 
yeah, message and, and shutdown. Uh, this is similar stuff as that, that you can do from the from the admin page. Uh, but um, I well, um, there are there are uh, for 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 applications. Not everyone has access to the uh, server admin page, and you don't want to give them that privilege. Um, so you can actually build uh, similar functions into your application, saying, okay, I want to shut down one of the uh, one of the clients. But before I do that, um, I will send them a message. So it's it's it works uh, it works exactly the way as as from the admin page. The result will be uh, the same thing. Uh, I mean, uh, oh. shut down. Uh, well, I I don't think there's any other way of uh, <laughs> explaining what it does. It will just shut you down. Um, and uh, the the message will be the um, the alert. Um, the alert dialog from the browser. So the the uh, this this can this can differ from from browser to browser how this will look. So in Safari it's a bit more sophisticated than it is in uh, or is it in Chrome or the other way around. But anyway, that's it. It depends on the browser how that will look. It's not uh, it's not all that uh, attractive sometimes. Um, so now we we're getting to um, to the um, the uh, target of this uh, this session actually uh, that is broadcast information because that sounds uh, that sounds uh, very attractive um, you can you can uh, do stuff that um, you probably uh, well was weren't weren't thinking of. Uh, so, um, what what does the broadcast information do? It is uh, it's actually you subscribe to a broadcast channel, um, so that, that, that you can you can make up that channel name yourself. You uh, can generate a UID for that if you want. Um, so each client that wants to um, get this broadcasting information needs to subscribe to um, to the channel with the uh, with the ID. Uh, or with the name actually. Um, the subscription is so based on the channel name. The subscription has to uh, have a, a callback method. So when a particular client receives a broad a, a bit of uh, in, uh, the uh, the broadcast information, it can actually do something with it. Otherwise, it's uh, it's not really helpful. Um, and each client can has his own identifying name. And that can be helpful. So, um, for example, the callback the callback function will also get that particular broadcaster name. Uh, so you don't need if you if you have like a couple of broadcaster channels, you don't have to program a different callback function for each uh, for each um, for each uh, 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 type of broadcaster. You can just group that and split it by name, and uh, you you see uh, a bit of code later on. So um, the use cases, and there's probably a lot, a lot more um, that you can think of. But um, it's it could be as simple as um, uh, just messaging another client through dialogue. Um, I must say this this can be a, a um, yeah. You, you you need to think how this works because the callback function needs to run on the actual client. So if a client is busy for a while, then uh, that callback function will not be called, will not be executed before that um, user is actually done. So that means the dialog can can be uh, can be uh, presented a little bit later. Um, uh, the other thing is you you can also pass information from one client to another, which is exactly what a normal message would do, but. Um, you can you can think uh, think of this a bit bit uh, wider and and uh, you can use a JSON string to pass and a JSON string is really helpful because it can contain a lot of information that you can pass back and then actually do something with it. Well, um, <clears throat> that is that both both of these things I'm going to show you. Um, <clears throat> So I've made a um, a little uh, demo application. I hope it's going to be readable for everyone. Probably, uh, I don't know if I. 
Oh no, I will just zoom in. Um, it is not as beautiful as um, Victor's uh, um, demo solution. Uh, I actually work with uh, uh, without a database here, so everything you see is just uh, screens, screens in code. Um, well, here I can uh, I I just made a, a quick login uh, screen, and I can uh, log in, uh, for example. Uh, uh, Robert at servercamp.com. Yeah, it's easy. I, I knew his password, so. And um, actually, I can I can open another another window here. Um, uh, is that still? Yeah. And I can I, I by coincidence I know Hiya's credentials as well. So now I've got two sessions. Uh, the left hand side is Robert's uh, session, and uh, the right hand side is uh, Hio session. So now, when I want to uh, send Hio a uh, a message here, I can I can easily use his uh, his um, username that he subscribed to uh, to the application, uh, and uh, say uh, hello Hio, and that will pop up in the other dialog. So. Thank you. It's magic. Okay. You will be pleased to hear that this is also a uh, um, cross application server. So people using RapidMQ uh, have multiple application servers that, that just uh, broadcast uh, uh, over RapidMQ Rapid as well. Um, as I was saying, this is, this is a little bit of a, a, a joke this way, although a, um, of what I told you earlier about the uh, browser dialogues that were not so attra attractive. These dialogues are a lot more attractive, but has the downside that it has to go through a callback function, which can be triggered later. So, um, what all what all started this uh, was was actually a a question from uh, from uh, one of my customers and a bit of information I. Uh, um, I saw uh, on the forum that uh, was posted by Johan. So I thought, well, if Johan says you can do it that way, it must be possible. And it's valid, and Johan's not going to tell me you can't do it that way. You're doing it wrong. Um, so uh, my, my, uh, my customer is uh, coming from Smart Client. Uh, in the meantime, uh, it's all being converted to NG. Um, but in Smart Client, we had this beautiful. Um, a beautiful possibility to open up a second window and have part of your solution being uh, 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 being uh, uh, displayed uh, in in that separate window, which is permanently on a second uh, second monitor, for example. Uh, that can be really helpful uh, when you talk about, for example, a calendar. Uh, people at a reception desk. Uh, do want that whole schedule for the whole day, but in the meantime, they have to work in the application. And rather than uh, moving to the calendar and back uh, to what they were doing, uh, it, it, is, it is helpful to, to have two windows. In NG, um, this is no longer possible because, uh, I mean, it's only, um, it's only a browser window. You can have a form and dialogue here. Um, and that is about it. But that form in dialog can't move out of your browser window. So um, I thought, well, maybe I can make this work with the broad, uh, broadcaster plugin. So what I try to do, this is uh, this is the application. I have my home screen here. I have a, a client uh, uh, client form, a projects form. This is just to illustrate some of the uh, things. And I have a calendar here. So um, not, nothing really fancy. Um, when I click this button, I can actually get that calendar externally. And by pressing the button, my main window is going back to the home screen. And people can just um, go, in, go in here, uh, click through the application. But if they come to the calendar, it does nothing anymore. So. But because it knows you have an external session. 
Um, from that external session, or, uh, normally your calendar does have appointments. Within the appointments, you have information about a particular client, the project he is part of, um, and it might be that you open up an, um, an appointment in this uh, external calendar window and then say, oh, wait, but I want to go to that particular client. So when I, to, to illustrate, I just made two dumb buttons here. Um, and when I click that button, my main window goes to the client's, win uh, the, the client's uh, window and the same for the projects. And of course, um, I, I, already, um, I already told you that um, this is really based on a JSON object. So it's not that ob object is, um, uh, is carrying uh, the information about what you want to do, the, a the action, but also what, what client ID is this all about. So um, in this case, you can work with two windows. So now the, the uh, question is what happens if users just close this window again? Well, here you all, all of the other stuff that I, I uh, covered on the um, uh, client manager plugin uh, hits uh, hits in or kicks in. Um, if I now click the calendar, it will look for that particular session, doesn't find it anymore, and will display the calendar in your main window again. And now I can do the same thing: open, open up, and uh, and show it again. These are two separate sessions, meaning also two licenses. Yes, so that's important to to know before <laughs> before you start doubling your the, the amount of uh, licenses you give away. So, um, but uh, I, I mean, uh, some sometimes the the pain of a license is uh, is uh, uh, or, or the the um, I must say the uh, uh, the benefits of the second window are. Have priority over the uh, the pain of an extra license, um, and actually, it is good to know that um, you can have these two windows uh, cooperate, uh, and and not just uh, not just being side by side on a window, and basically have two separate applications running uh, with one one launched in the, in the calendar state, and of course, um, if you if you think about workload uh, on the server. If you only open up part of your solution, like uh, only the calendar part here, um, that that impact on performance uh, of the total server is uh, far less than uh, running a full uh, the full application as a as a separate session. So that can uh, can all be uh, be be part of um, uh, the, the uh, consideration of doing it this way. Um, then of course, and uh, yesterday when I was uh, was actually preparing my demo solution, I noticed that something has been broken in, or at least was removed from the uh, ng desktop client. Because in ng desktop client and in all the versions, that was much nicer. Uh, okay, I'll have this. Um, uh, use my own credentials this time so this is a uh, this is the ng desktop uh, client uh, which is electron in all the versions when i um, asked for an external window um, that was actually an ex uh, an, an uh, another ng desktop window that was opened with uh, this the separate session uh, so nothing changes from what I've said earlier. Um, to make it work for this demo, I just uh, um, uh, decided to open it, uh, in, uh, open the second window in, uh, in the browser here. Uh, but what is, what is more important, when you, when you use the ng desktop, um, you, you actually got other things that, uh, that can help you. So if my, um, uh, oops, what happened here? Uh, it's obvious. So, um, if my ND desktop window is like really hidden away behind all all different uh, uh, all different uh, uh, applications, and I click the show clients here, then I actually get focus on the ND desktop again. It it um, it is is brought uh, brought to the front, uh, so it uh, attra uh, attracts the uh, what, um, yeah, yeah 
gets the attention of the user. So that was basically what I what I want to tell you, uh, tell you about the the uh, use with NG Desktop. But as I was saying, the um, something has been removed from the uh, recent no, versions. Sorry. You have different. Uh, you have two different calls now. You can do the same thing still. Okay. You need to do. I think an NG Desktop details shows you around. But we have now two things because customers were complaining. Hey, if I click on that, I expect to go to the browser. Okay. Uh, yeah, so Johan say Johan says uh, Johan says after all I'm doing it wrong. Uh, I w I I. <laughs> the thing is, we had a lot of discussions, and I think even the latest final code I have already fixed again in that area. Okay, I will I will show you later because I what you're saying I was hoping to get, and I've played around with that, but it didn't give me uh, a satisfying. Uh, still be able to create new MP desktop in it, but by default we now go to. Outside. Okay, but I, I uh, so Johan says it should be possible still to do the uh, the two windows and NG desktop. Uh, I mean, my my demo uh, stays the same. Uh, if you if you interact with, from one window to the other one, you get focus on the NG desktop, and that can be done with NG desktop, but can't be done with the um, with the browser. So if you if you just have a browser uh, based solution or a real browser, then uh, um, yeah, unfortunately. So um, I can uh, I can give you a, a little bit of uh, information about how this actually is done in, in code because after all we said we can and we used to uh, to actually see some code. Um, I have to look up where. Can you plug? I I will I will I will zoom in a little bit. I realize it's. Uh, So um, here I have uh, uh, I have my um, session uh, session scope, um, which uh, really carries all of the uh, basically all of the uh, the broadcaster information. Uh, then uh, I'm starting this uh, external window from uh, sorry from here. Um, so what happens when I um, what happens when I press the button? Um, I navigate to my home. Uh, I navigate to my home uh, uh, screen again. Uh, that's not so interesting. I generate a a, gen a, a yeah a random uh, uh, channel name. And uh, then I start building the uh, URL to open the external window, uh, which in this case is the server URL, with the um, solution, uh, the, the actual channel, uh, which I pass in as uh, the sort of channel name, which I pass in as a query string. And when we're in developer, I use this no debug is true, which enables you to actually run multiple browser windows. Um, so normally when you launch an new session then the old one gets uh, disconnected but in this case you can actually run uh, multiple um, up to whatever your license allows you to do um, so uh, all this is to determine how big my, my screen one uh, I want my screen to be uh, if it's in desktop I show the external URL which are you do it on purpose uh, now I do it on purpose oh. yeah, yeah, yeah because the other because the other stuff didn't work <laughs> <laughs> But uh, um, and and otherwise, I just use the uh, show URL. Uh, so that that is not not uh, this is not too ex too exciting. The most important part here is um, getting that channel name and passing that to the uh, to the new session. So when I get into when I get to the new session, um, there is this uh, on solution open uh, uh, calendar. That will actually see if there's a channel information. If there's channel information, I will initialize the broadcaster, um, the broadcaster uh, on, on the second window. And what I also do is I do I make a I make this call um, uh, add client information, which again is calendar with the channel. How you do it, um, uh, it's not it's not really that important. There are multiple ways to do this, um, but I 
find uh, I find it convenient to have this information. I will show you why. Um, so what does the broadcaster do? So if you um, if you for uh, for example you, uh, you oh yeah I will quickly tell you show you how you set up the broadcast in case you don't know. So I have a scope variable called broadcaster here that will get the broadcaster object which I set up here. Um, so this is this is the actual name uh, of the uh, of the uh, uh, channel. Uh, sorry, no, the identifier of the channel. This is the channel name, and this is the uh, callback function. Um, this is where the magic actually happens. So when you're in that callback function, you get a name, and in this case, I build my uh, broadcaster uh, callback function to accept uh, uh, payload. Payload will, will be that JSON. So if either of those two don't exist, then uh, we'll return here. And um, if uh, if this is the, the external calendar broadcaster, which I can uh, determine by name, then I will try to actually pass the, um, the uh, JSON string back to an object. And and finally, if that succeeded, um, then I can I can actually look at the um, uh, look at the content of the the payload. So, um, as I was saying, I have the action here. So, um, if the action is focus, actually that 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 already happened because all always when you um, when you make that call, either way, so into the main window or the the external calendar window in this case. If it's ng desktop, I do that focus. Um, there, um, with the at least with the older version of ng desktop, uh, there was some gotcha where um, we uh, we set up a, a custom menu in ng desktop, and I noticed that when uh, creating the second window, that all these menu settings were overwritten, um, and what I had to do. When as soon as I started the second window, I needed to make that call to the main window again to set up the menu. Otherwise, it works in the wrong window. So you can only uh, that at least was my experience. You can only have one menu working on one of the ng desktop windows. Um, and then uh, of course the two um, the uh, the the uh, two examples I did uh, open a project uh, which sets the uh, the uh, selected item uh, of my menu to projects and uh, the other one is, uh, is is client so that is basically it you want to go down yeah this is the most interesting part for you yeah i was already wondering if you do a Test for web connect. <laughs> <laughs> if I take the string, yeah, no, but don't 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 move on to so fast, but <laughs> because I will cover that. So um, you, I I showed you when uh, I was clicking the uh, calendar button in the main window uh, that um, it wouldn't do anything if the external window was open. So that is all uh, all handled in the um, in in the uh, in the callback of that. Um, uh, side uh, side nav uh, component, where I check if the external calendar is still alive. So um, what is important here is uh, at least I need to have that uh, external calendar channel set up uh, in the main window. If that doesn't exist, I can't even uh, I can't even even have a second uh, second window. Um, and then I get to the point why I wanted to do that. Um, to to add that additional information here, so uh, um, you you remember here uh, seeing the calendar with the uh, channel name, I can filter all my connected clients or only on that bit of information. So in theory, this or in theory, in always this should only give me one uh, uh, an array of one connected client. Uh, so that is why I don't have to loop over all my clients because there's only going to be one um, uh, one position here um, that has the client information. Um, from the client information, I can read the, the status line. As you uh, hopefully remember, that contains information about 
the WebSocket. And as long as the WebSocket is connected, that window is still alive. Um, if it is disconnected, and that is immediately, if I if I uh, uh, close the browser window with the external calendar, the the status line will say WebSocket disconnected. This isn't going to work. So then the whole function returns false. Um, if it returns false, then of course in the main window I want to clean up my channel name. Um, if there is a broadcaster, I want to destroy that broadcaster and set the broadcaster uh, variable uh, to uh, to nil again. Um, and um, even if I still get a client ID, which means that uh, the client still exists, then I also want to shut down that client completely because the WebSocket is disconnected. I know for sure that this window is never going to come back again because it was initiated by the user. And it, it, if it's abandoned, it's abandoned. So um, I think um, that covers like everything uh, seen yeah there's there's a, a, a I can, um, can I move down a little bit for uh, it seems seems a bit off here hopefully you can still read that uh, bottom bit um, when uh, when I was showing you to send the message uh, through dialogue um, this is what actually happens um, uh, in the uh, uh, again, I look for the connected clients. I look through the clients. I um, try to get the username that I entered in the uh, in the uh, uh, username box. Um, and if that WebSocket is still connected, uh, that is the session I want to uh, I, I want to be on. So that is set into the um, JS client name or variable. And uh, if that exists. Um, I can uh, I can actually um, uh, oh yeah that I forgot to tell you um, each by uh, in order to do it uh, on the solution open I always register a um, broadcaster already so there's always going to be a broadcaster with the username the channel name and um, the callback to this uh, function that we were uh, uh, sorry uh, callback to the function that actually shows the dialogue here. Um, so, uh, when I, when I retrieve that uh, client information, I get the username, I initiate a broadcaster, a broadcaster message. And because that's only a one, one time thing, I immediately destroy the broadcaster again. Um, and after all, if it couldn't find the client information, that user is probably not online or using the application anymore, close the browser or whatever. Um, so we'll give you a message saying, well, the user is not online anymore. Um, hopefully that all made, sen made sense. And if you have any questions, then uh, I think this is the moment. <laughs> you mentioned that users have to register. How does that work? Um, yeah, that is that is actually this. Uh, so that is this um, this call when you uh, through the client manager you um, uh, you call this function get broadcaster, which gives you the broadcaster object. Um, this is the username of the, uh, in, the in this case the username, but uh, in the in the example of the external calendar I just named that external calendar um, can be anything the actual channel name which uh, which you sent your message to and then the, uh, the callback uh, message channel so this is this is all you have to do for registering does the user have to register to use the does the user have to register to use the no 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 uh, the re registering is is purely a, 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 a code code thing you, you have to you have to execute that bit of code in order to to get a session registered to it, it's not something that a user actually has to do that's taken care of by you through code yeah and the the look and feel of the message can you change that from the dialogues that i showed yeah, yeah these are just uh, uh, the dialogue plugin 
from uh, from server from within server. So uh, CSS, do you, do your magic. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. Other questions? Was it all clear or? Oh, sorry. What about Patrick's first initial chat? What about it? Yeah. What ab about the user manager? The, the user manager plugin. Oh, that yeah, that's that's the, yeah, the this, this is the other one. Yeah. It's the new one. Thanks. Yeah. So the the, the <laughs> as I was doing a client manager session, uh, Patrick said, "Well, that is related to my is previous user manager, so and that shouldn't be used anymore." Thanks. So. All right. So if there are no more questions, then uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, one, one more, que one more question here, uh, Hayo. Oh. Uh, just an additional question, um, not related to that what where you were doing, but you can get um, the client manager also has the option to get a connected client with the filter, in the filter yes. string. Did you use that? Yes, I use that on the. Um, uh, on checking if that uh, here, this is this is what you mean. Okay. So when I open when I open the external uh, calendar, I I uh, put the additional information being the calendar with the channel name into the additional okay. info. I can check for that. Basically, just the name you add there. I I make that bit of a uh, bit of additional information unique. So uh, the the the, um, uh, the reason for that is I only get one one uh, connected client back. I only can get, can I only can get one connected client back and just do okay, the thank you. do the logic on that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. For who uh, this was new, you could do this. Yeah, for me too. <laughs> yeah, you are. yeah I, I even didn't know the, the no debug option to start a second client. So no. I've learned <laughs> I've learned today. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that that's the good part of the demo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we, we do this to learn stuff, so I uh, I have learned stuff. Thank you very much. Good.